Hey everybody, welcome back. We are in market structures and we're looking at the market structure perfect competition. Okay, that's the market structure that we're looking at right now. Here are the attributes of a perfectly competitive market and a firm operating in a perfectly competitive market. Okay, here's the first thing. There's no product differentiation. What does that mean? Every supplier is making the exact same good, the exact same good. We don't have close substitutes. We've got perfect substitutes. Next, no barriers to entry. Firms can just move in and exit from the industry at will, okay? I don't even use the word easy. It's not just easy for them to move in and out. They can do it at will. There's no cost to move in, no cost to move out. If this doesn't sound very realistic, hey guys, we're on a conceptual level here, okay? We're just trying to understand the concept of perfectly competitive firms. It's not quite what we see in the real world. Next, tons, okay, of potential and actual suppliers. I write tons because I have a hard time completely embracing the uh, conceptual idea, which is it's actually infinite, okay, which is crazy, right? We got infinite number of potential slash actual suppliers. Whatever you want to think of, you can think of hundreds, thousands, millions, whatever. We just, the number of suppliers, it's a lot, okay? If you want to think about infinite, you can think about infinite. It's just hard for me to do so. Anyhow, so those are our attributes of perfectly competitive firms perfectly competitive market structures, if you will. What we're gonna do right now is a side-by-side -side analysis. You do it all the time when you, find, when you get to perfect competition, okay? And I'm gonna to cut to the chase. Why do we do side-by-side -side with perfect competition? Because what we're doing is theory of the firm. Now, I'm giving you a big point here. You might think it's minor, but I think it's kind of big. We're doing theory of the firm. It's how firms make decisions. So the key graph is actually this one on the right because that's the firm. But we have to do a side-by-side -side analysis because we need to know the price the firm is going to charge. And the price is not determined by the firm. It's determined by the market. And that is the reason we do side-by-side -side analysis. I'll say that again here in a little bit. As you guys know, I'm oftentimes redundant. But anyhow, it's a big key of why we do it. Now, how, um, that's why we do it. Why can we do a side-by-side -side analysis? Big key here, okay? The horizontal axis has our quantity of output. Because there's no product differentiation, we have homogeneous products. They're the exact same. That's what allows us to do a side-by-side -side analysis. Now, here's where I'm getting to, guys. We're not gonna do side-by-side -side analysis in any other market structure. You will not do it for monopolistically competitive firms or oligopolies or monopolies. You'll never do a side-by-side -side analysis. Why? Because, let's just talk monopolistically competitive firms. Guys, the product is differentiated. It's different per firm that's making the good. Nobody's making the exact same good. That's key, y'all. So the only time you do side-by-side -side analysis is when you can, and when you can is no product differentiation, homogeneous products, only in perfectly competitive market structures. Next, when you do a side-by-side -side analysis, the vertical axis has to be calibrated the exact same. Now the horizontal doesn't. In fact, I'm emphasizing it's not. Millions, billions, hundreds, thousands, whatever, okay? So much smaller than this number, okay? So Q, uh, upper, uh, capital Q, lowercase Q over there. So same exact good axes are calibrated differently. Here, definitely calibrated the exact same. Now, we're pulling a little fast one with you because in Econ Busters, we always put dollars per unit, or at least we always put dollars, in, dollars per unit after we teach supply and demand, okay? Why do we do this dollars per unit? Why are we so insistent on it? Because this vertical axis is measuring so much more than price, okay? But look at this, we put price, what the heck? Yup, you can put dollars per unit, nothing wrong with putting dollars per unit, but the reason we put price is to emphasize something. The reason we're drawing this graph right here is we wanna know the market price. That's the whole key, is we wanna know the market price. So here we go. Guys, when it comes to this graph, don't make it hard. You've been doing it since supply and demand. It's just a market. It's just a supply market. That's what that M is, demand market. It's like supply and demand has always worked for us. You just go right there and you say, hey, I know what that is. That's the quantity market. I even know why we're gonna end up there. And that's the price market. So very simple. But why are we doing this again? Well, we have to look at the market to find the price. Why? Because the firm is going to be a price taker. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to draw this over. Price firm. Guys, the firm is going to have to take the price that's set by the market. They have no 
pricing power. That's key. They have zero pricing power. Now, here's the next thing. Normally at Econ Busters, if we draw a price uh, line, we do it dashed. Why? Because it's just a reference for us, okay? It's just making a reference to a vertical distance. We leave solid lines for functions. However, watch what I'm about to do. Solid line. Why? Because that's not just the price, okay? That price firm is also demand firm, okay? Now take a look at this. Demand firm, demand market. How do we get the demand market? Truly what we did is a horizontal summation of every single demand curve in the market to get demand market, okay? Once again, we never shy away from complexities at Econ Busters. But demand firm is different. This is the demand curve the firm faces. This is the demand for the good in the marketplace, horizontal sum of all the individual demand curves, right? But this is the demand curve the firm faces. Take a look at it, it's flat, it's a horizontal line. What should that scream to you? perfectly elastic, which means for this firm's products, okay, their buyers are perfectly responsive, perfectly elastic to price changes, which means if the firm raised the price at all, if they tried to just raise it just by a little bit, what's going to happen to the quantity demanded? It's going to drop to zero. No matter what, the smallest change in price, QD would drop to zero. Why? Because guys, once again, there's no product differentiation. There are perfect substitutes. There's the exact same good right over there. And hey, we've got tons of other people making it. It's super easy to go buy somebody else's good. So we have a flat demand curve that the firm faces. Next, that demand curve, or really I shouldn't say it that way. I wanna be very specific. This price point is going to give us our marginal revenue curve. Now, marginal revenue. I haven't done a lot with marginal revenue. Here's what marginal revenue means or what it equals or whatever. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue we get from producing one more good, okay? Marginal revenue, the additional revenue we're gonna get from producing one more good. First of all, we need to understand that a firm in this conceptual learning that we're doing here, once again, staying with the concept, somewhat departed from real world, this firm can sell as much as they want, as much as they can at that price point, okay? They're not worried about finding buyers. They're such a small firm in this big market. As long as they accept that price and don't raise the price, they can sell as much as they want. So, marginal revenue, the additional revenue they get from supplying one more good. Well, if they supply another good, what are they get? What are they gonna get? What's the additional revenue? They're gonna get that price firm. They're gonna get that price market. Remember, price firm and price market, the same, okay? They're gonna get that price, so it is the price. Now, this marginal revenue curve right now, if you're thinking critically, you're thinking, no duh, that was like pretty simple, straightforward. I just wanna warn you, future market structures Marginal revenue is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be equal to the demand curve. It's going to be something different, okay? So it actually is very key that we understand that MR curve for a perfectly competitive firm. Next, we've done all that cost of production in the unit called cost of production. And the, one of the biggest reasons, perhaps the biggest reason we did all that, is to be able to just walk in here and, hey, draw a marginal cost curve. Now, the marginal cost curve actually oftentimes for physical products has a downward sloping and then an upward sloping. In economics, we oftentimes just draw the upward sloping. I'm going to do that quite a bit. That's the important part, okay? And if you want to just think that there's like a little break in the graph, that's perfectly fine too, okay? So I'm just going to draw a marginal cost just like that. So what are we trying to do here? Theory of the firm, market structure, perfectly competitive. We want to find the price and the quantity. We've already found the price. We want to find the quantity. So that's the last thing we need to do for this and intro video. So here's the key, y'all. We got a marginal cost and a marginal revenue. The marginal revenue curve to the firm is the firm's marginal benefit curve. I don't want you to get confused. Marginal revenue, that additional revenue they get for producing one more good, that's the benefit that they get for producing one more good, okay? I'm not going to put MB because I don't want you to get confused with when we talk about marginal benefit of a consumer, but I'm just saying, guys, this marginal revenue is measuring the additional benefit a firm gets from producing one more good, that revenue, right? And when we see marginal curves, we think vertically. And so we're looking at all of these units produced, right? There's just tons of units produced all those units produced, we're looking and saying, hey, this is the marginal revenue. That's marginal revenue. Let me keep that marked. And this curve right here is the marginal cost. 
Well, I'm going to produce the good if the marginal revenue for that good is greater than the marginal cost. Just look at all these units. Just think vertically. The marginal revenue above the marginal cost, right? Let's go to this good right here. The marginal revenue, thinking vertically, above the marginal cost. If MR exceeds the marginal cost, produce it, okay? Keep producing the good until they are equal. Q profit max. That's where your uh, profits are going to be maximized. You're just adding the profits up until you get to right here. Don't produce past that amount. Don't produce any of these goods over here. Why not? Look at the verticals, right? The marginal cost exceeds the marginal revenue for all goods to the right of that point. There it is, guys. That's everything we need to know foundationally about perfectly competitive market structures. Why we do the side-by-side -side analysis. And notice, we've got the price and the quantity for the market. Super easy. What did we want to do here in this intro uh, video? Just simply find the price and the quantity. That's all we wanted to find. We had to draw the market because they were a price taker. So to find the price for the firm, we had to draw the market, right? And the quantity is based on knowing that as long as MR is greater than MC, they will produce it and they will keep producing until MR equals MC. At that equality, something is maximized. What is maximized? Profit. Thanks for tuning in, guys. That's an introduction to Perfectly Competitive Firms. See you in the next video.